and gentlemen, we have a world-class show tonight, and we're coming to you live. Now, folks, I hope you've enjoyed Masters Month. It was supposed to be January, the very first night in January. We had impressionistic artist Lindsay Dawson on, and we've had everybody in between. And Jean-Claude Navarro came out from France. Well, I hope you see that we have tried here at Celebrity Shopping Network give you an international flavor. And when we say Masters, we search the globe because, you know, we had... Not in January, but in October, we had Adrian Neve, who was born in Argentina, uh, lives in Israel. Uh, the new cover of Print World Guide flew all the way out here to be on, on our show. Jan Tamian, all the way from Romania to come here. We have had, um, oh, you name it, they have been on the show. And tonight, tonight, all the way from down under, from Australia, we have legendary artist Graham Stevenson. Now, Graham has flown out from Australia to be on the show, and this is if you could see some of the work in the studio, let alone the ones hanging on the wall. And you're going to be, it's just going to be, I believe, mesmerized. You're going to go, oh. That's what you say. And I mean, you go, wow. Because it is truly stunning achievement on canvas and on board and and. and I tell you, this will be one of the greatest shows we've ever done. But here's what we're going to do. Uh, I want all of our early bird viewers now and everybody that tunes in, I want to bring up Graham early because Graham Stevenson, he, he's going to be here, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll get him back up here a little later on the show. But we have some amazing originals. We just want to come out of the gate and show you. So, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, all the way from Australia, Graham Stevenson. Hey. All right, Graham. How's it going? That's great. Thank you. You enjoying Los Angeles? Los Angeles, big city. Is Very, it big? Yeah, it's a big city. It really is. Well, last night at dinner, you mentioned that uh, Australia has like 20 million people. That's correct, yeah. And Los Angeles has eight million. You believe that? Little uh, eight million. <laughs> yeah. So we have almost half of the yeah. population you have. And you were telling me last night Australia is equal to the continental United States. 40. Just about. Yeah. It's only just quite. It's just slightly smaller. Um, but big country. It's uh, almost the same size as the continental United States. And now, if I were to travel, because you had a bad experience last night before dinner. <laughs> yeah. If I was to travel to Sydney or to Melbourne. Am I going to see the kind of traffic we have here? Not at all. I mean, uh, I think Los Angeles is uh, unusually specific as far as the traffic is concerned, unless you go to Hong Kong or Beijing or Singapore. But you know what? L.A. is, because it's so widely spread out, you're obviously going to have all of this traffic, and you've got 8 million people living in the city. That's a lot of people. Well, what's your biggest holiday in Australia besides, you know, Christmas, New Year's? I mean, what is there, is there like, gee, like well, here we got Columbus Day, yeah. and uh, we got... Uh, Veterans Day, we have Memorial Day, we have Labor Day. Do you have a big holiday over there that we don't have? Um, probably Anzac Day, which is coming up. Anzac Day? Yeah, which is uh, like, a, like your Veterans Day. Okay. Um, now, do they get a day off from work on Anzac Day? Yeah, I mean, Australians enjoy their public holidays. Okay. Without a doubt. So if I got in a car in Sydney, Australia, and let's say Anzac Day is Friday. Yeah. And I get in a car on Thursday afternoon because everybody wants to take that three day weekend. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I get right on the one. What, what's the main highway in Sydney? Well, the Pacific Highway. Pacific Highway. Yeah, the same Pacific thing highway. we got here. <laughs> so I get right on the Pacific Highway at 3:45 downtown Sydney. Uh huh. Is it going to is it going to be some traffic or? I mean, you know what? No way in the world there's going to be like LA traffic. Really? Under any circumstances, you're going to get a little bit of pile up here and there, but it takes about a half an hour generally for the traffic to clear. Well, We're well, not looking at four and five yeah, hours like, in yeah. traffic. No way in the world. Uh, well, yeah, though there was an exceptional situation you had yesterday. Um, now I, I I don't want to get this wrong. Yeah. But I I keep forgetting because of the sheer simplicity of the name. You were born in Wabba Wabba. <laughs> you got it wrong again. I got it wrong again. Say the name. It's Wagga Wagga. Wagga Wagga. I was born in, it's the largest country town in Australia. Wagga Wagga. Uh, yeah, I was born in Wagga Wagga. Uh, and Wagga Wagga, actually a lot of the towns and cities in Australia, obviously not Sydney, but a lot of the places are named after Aboriginal uh, sayings. You know, like if it was a creek or if it was a place for food. And Wagga Wagga actually means the place of many crows. That's what it means. The that's place what it means. of many crows. That's Wagga Wagga. That's where I was born. 
But how can it mean the place of? I mean, because it has to mean like crow, crow, right? I mean, Do you speak Aboriginal? No. <laughs> Guess what? But I mean, there's only two words. <laughs> like, waga, like, waga. You're not going to know. They sort it out themselves. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Then, you know, I'm just thinking. <laughs> I, uh, uh, so anyway, that, now how, did, how long did you live there in Wagga Wagga? Um, I was, I, my parents uh, um, left when I was about seven. I was only there for a while. And we went to the Australian Capital Territory. Okay. Where I ended up going to a private Catholic boys' college. Okay. Uh, for my um, obviously for my schooling, and then I went to college after that. Um, but Canberra is the, the nation's capital, as is Washington is. Yeah. And then when I was about seventeen, my parents moved up to the Gold Coast. And that's where you live. Well, you have a house there. Yeah, today. that's 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 where we live right now. Now, is it safe to say? I mean, you live quite an adventurous outback type of life. I mean, when I first called you, uh, you were. On a boat? Where were you? I was in, uh, actually, I just got back from Vanuatu, which is a Pacific Island nation of 83 islands, about an hour and a half by air in uh, uh, from Fiji, smack dab in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, getting up towards the equator. Okay. Um, and I had been, uh, I'd just basically taken a year off. I mean, I've been doing my profession for 26 years, and I just thought I'd like to go to the Pacific. And, and, and I've traveled the world 16 times. Uh, this is my 53rd trip to the United States. So. And you were talking at dinner. Um, I mean, you got some snake bites, bird bites. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's, and, a lot, there's uh, a lot of scars. Yeah, got us scared. You know, at, at dinner, uh, Betty, my wife, uh, Katie, and all were listening because we didn't know this. Mm. But the number one, I guess, cause of animal death in Australia is getting eaten by a hippo. No, 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 no. Not eaten, but killed <laughs> no, by a... No, no, hippos are in Africa. Africa, okay, all right. <laughs> you got the wrong place. So. Uh, but, 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 but they like to eat Americans from, 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 from the side of the oh, I think every wild animal seems to like the taste of an American. Uh, yeah, so. yeah so, so, so that's... Uh, now, in, in Australia, the number one animal... In... Well, I mean, you know, our biggest apex predator is the crocodile. The and obviously, you you would have seen Steve Irwin um, yeah. when he was over here. Obviously, an amazing young man. Unfortunately, you know his demise was in 206, but but he really changed the attitude towards a great deal of uh, Australian animals. But if you're going to go to Australia, you have to understand that nine out of the most ten poisonous snakes in the world live in Australia. Yeah. We have the most poisonous spiders. And they probably all look the same, but just like a non-poisonous <laughs> one, so you can't tell. You're not going to. You're not going to. Yeah. Well, actually, we do. We do know because. Because the kids in Australia are actually taught, okay, if you see a snake, leave the snake alone. Um, and generally when people get bitten by snakes, is if somebody was trying to cut your head off, you'd get quite upset about it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I sure would. So I, I, therefore I, the snake gets upset, therefore you end up getting bitten by a snake. Know, I've never run out and picked up one here either. I mean, <laughs> we see them. I, I well, I mean, it, it does happen, unfortunately, but the bottom line is if you leave them alone, generally they'll leave you alone as well. And you know, we were talking about you got like sharks too. You go yeah, swimming out there, sharks. and you know. It was always because I was diving in Vanuatu. Why is one big meal in there, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, but if you, put, if you put yourself in the food chain, it's a good <laughs> chance something's going to happen. So. Well, now a lot of folks know this. You became very uh, successful as an artist, and, uh -huh. and your images have been licensed uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. And you all of a sudden decided, hey, I would like to not drop out of society, but mm -hmm. You bought a boat, sure. a, a large one, and you had uh, nautical experience, uh, obviously, in the past. And you just started going all over, would you call it Oceania, uh, or would you, well, would you say? mostly the South Pacific, but I had been to other places in the world. I mean, generally, uh, as far as my work was concerned, because I was extremely well known when I started my career as a wildlife artist. Okay. So I absolutely love natural science. So a lot of what I was doing was traveling to South America, India, Africa, you know, Europe, Alaska, Canada, uh, Southeast Asia, obviously the islands of the Pacific, to literally study a lot of the animals that I put into play in my paintings. And as I went along, and as you do, you evolve yeah. as an artist, my work has evolved from, you know, I mean, I started painting when I was five, and what I was doing as a kid was studying animals. So it was really just a natural occurrence that I went through and kept, kept doing that. Did your parents know when you were growing up, I mean, like, did they see you at five or six and go, you know, this, this, this guy's going to be an artist? I mean, were you painting all the time? At the age of five, and actually my mum and dad still have the first drawing I ever did, and that was a Br'er Rabbit. Of a, a rabbit? Yeah, Br'er Bre Rabbit, okay. as in Uncle Remus. And um, it, I just basically knew at the age of five that I 